てめえのしつけの問題だぞてめえは女をこれが絆だ<笑>いい加減にしなよ竹道君死んじゃうでも黙って見てられないひな何やってひな<笑> Welcome to Tokyo Revengers Season 2. Last time on the Tokyo Revengers Season 1 finale, our protagonist Takamichi was held at gunpoint by Teta Kisaki and presumed to be dead. What actually happened before the trigger was pulled? Find out in today's recap of this second season of Tokyo Revengers. <laughs> Takamichi is devastated by the loss of Chifuyu, and as tears stream down his face, Teta's harsh words cut through his grief. But just as Teta prepares to take drastic action, the unexpected happens. The lights go out, and a mysterious figure arrives to intervene. When Takamichi wakes up outside, he's startled to see Keisuke, or so he thinks. It turns out to be Kazutora, and his greeting is anything but friendly. Kazutora's attack catches Takamichi off guard, but as the former Taman member explains his motivations, Takamichi begins to understand the depth of the gang's corruption. In a twist of fate, he realizes that he's become a part of the problem, and Chifuyu's death is a tragic consequence of his own failure. But Kazutora offers him a glimmer of hope, a chance to reclaim the Taman they once knew, and put an end to the violence and greed that have consumed the gang. As they drive together, Takamichi struggles to make sense of the chaos around him. Kazutora's explanation of Manjiro's recent actions only adds to the confusion, and the news of Pachin and Peian's death is the stark reminder of the danger they face. But Kazutora is determined to make a difference, and he knows that they must confront Teta and his ties to Black Dragon if they have any hope of restoring order to Taman. In the midst of this turmoil, Takamichi realizes that he's not alone. Despite their rocky history, he and Kazutora share a common goal to save Taman from itself and to honor the memory of those who have been lost along the way. Kazutora had always been suspicious of the corrupt practices of Taman and how the Black Dragon remnants had joined them, becoming Manjiro's heavy hitters. Takamichi nods in agreement, knowing that Black Dragon played a crucial role in the formation of Taman. Kazutora admits that he had connections to Black Dragon back then, but things have changed drastically. Now, they're swimming in money, corrupting Taman from the inside out. However, Kazutora had found their secret bank account and planned to stop the flow of money. Shifuyu, on the other hand, was determined to take down Teta. But, unfortunately, that decision cost him his life. The evidence points towards Teta being responsible for Hinata's death, which Kazutora and Naoto work hard to prove. Naoto shows Takemichi a video that he barely recognizes himself in. It is a testament to how the past can have a profound impact on the present. But as Naoto encourages Takamichi to watch the rest of the video, he realizes that he had ordered Atsushi to kill someone. The weight of that knowledge is almost unbearable, and he sinks into despair. But Naoto doesn't let him give up, reminding him that he is the one who can save Taman and Hinata. Takamichi must find the key to Teta's obsession with him and Hinata. In his mind, he recalls that Teta had called him his hero and starts to connect the dots. As the police officers arrive, Naoto extends his hand, telling Takamichi that they may not be able to meet again easily. Takamichi takes his hand, feeling a sense of purpose, and travels back in time. The scene changes, and Takamichi finds himself bowling with Hinata. He decides to show off his skills and impresses her with his strike. But the guy in the next lane seems to be in sync with them, and they strike at the same time. The moment fills Takamichi with a strange sense of deja vu. As Takamichi stares at the guy bowling beside him, his mind races with the possibility of where he had seen him before. Suddenly, it clicks. He recognizes him. Hakai, the vice captain of the second division, is standing right next to him. But Takamichi can't help but wonder if his newfound captaincy has affected his memory. 
Without hesitation, Hakai introduces himself and begins to bowl again, refusing to leave until he's played 10 games. Yet, Yuzua tries to leave, but Hakai is persistent on his quest to bowl. Takamichi can't help but feel a sense of familiarity with Hakai, even though he's now part of Taman. As he reflects on the present, Takamichi remembers Kazutora explaining that Hakai is the 11th leader of Black Dragon, and that he killed the previous leader for money. Hinata notes Hakai's height and slim build, which immediately irritates Takamichi. But as they begin to compete, Hakai shows off his impressive bowling skills, knocking down all the pins with ease. Takemichi tries to keep up, but it's clear that Hakai is on another level. They move on to other games, but no matter what they play, Hakai always seems to come out on top. Even when they play ping pong, which Yuzua insists there isn't a table for, Hakai's love of seeing Takemichi's reactions keep him going. Later, as Hakai and Takemichi arrive at Hakai's place, they immediately hit it off, and Hakai considers him his bro. Yuzua, on the other hand, declares herself as their big sister since they are now bros. Takemichi is surprised to find out that Hakai and Yuzua are siblings, and he can't help but wonder more about Hakai's life. Yuzua notices Takemichi's physical appearance and doubts how he became a captain, while Hakai's talents are exceptional and he can easily outrank him. Hinata agrees with Yuzua's statement, but emphasizes that Hakai looks tough. However, in that moment, Hakai suddenly freezes, and Yuzua points out his awkwardness around girls. Takemichi is amazed by Hakai's behavior, and he can't believe that this is the same Hakai Shiba from the Black Dragons. As they continue their conversation, Takamichi asks Hakai about his relationship with Takashi, and Hakai tells him that they are on the same level, and he considers him more of an older brother figure. Yuzua, who is fond of Takashi, displays her love by showing her lock screen with Hakai. Annoyed, she also shows Hakai her lock screen. The conversation takes a serious turn when Takamichi wonders if Hakai's actions in the future could lead to Takashi's disappearance. Takamichi is intrigued by Hakai's character, and he can't help but wonder what happened to change him so drastically. As they approach Hakai's house, they encounter members of the Black Dragons. Hajime, who recognizes Hakai, becomes furious that someone from Taman is on their turf. Seishu, who is their leader, orders his men to capture Takamichi. Yuzua, noticing the danger, tells Hinata to leave, and Hakai tells Takamichi to go away. But as the members approach them, Hakai decides to take action and punches one of the members, scaring the rest of them. Hakai apologizes profusely to Takamichi, explaining that he didn't mean to drag him into this mess. He then drops a bombshell. The leader of the Black Dragons is actually Taiju Shiba, his very own older brother. Incredulous, Takamichi can't help but wonder where Taiju is. Hajime pipes up, informing him that Taiju had popped out to the convenience store. Hakai's irritation is palpable as he muses out loud about why Taiju decided to show his face now, of all times. Seishu isn't having any of it, however, and swiftly points a blade at Hakai, warning him to watch his words. Yuzua leaps to Hakai's defense, kicking Seishu away. Hajime tries to reason with Seishu, reminding him that they are all siblings, but Seishu refuses to back down, swearing undying loyalty to Taiju. In the meantime, Takamichi is frantically trying to think of a way out of this situation. In the end, he decides that protecting Hinata is his top priority and he needs to leave. However, before he can make his escape, Taiju returns with a vengeance, charging at Takamichi and knocking him down with a clothesline move. Taiju is furious that they were having fun without him, and proceeds to pummel Takamichi. Hajime reveals to Taiju that Takamichi is actually the captain of Taman, and Taiju is completely floored by the revelation. He orders Hakai to kill Takamichi, clearly enraged that an outsider has been brought into their home, but won't even join their gang. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. What is the best genre of anime, and why? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Taiju, the heartless black dragon leader, orders Hakai to end Takemichi's life without any hesitation. Despite Takemichi's defense that he wasn't aware that he had trespassed on black dragon's turf, Taiju remains unfazed. Yuzua steps in to reason with Taiju, only to be met with a harsh slap and the accusation that she failed to raise Takemichi properly. 
Takamichi, though, barely standing, doesn't hesitate to speak up and tells Taiju that hitting women is never okay, let alone his own sister. Hinata steps in, trying to protect Takamichi, but to shield her, Takamichi takes the beatings. Hakai pleads with Taiju to stop, but the ruthless leader only halts the attack after Hakai makes a deal to join Black Dragon. Days later, as Takamichi reflects on the situation, he wakes up in Hakai's care, who reveals that he had already decided to leave Taman and thanks him for standing up for his sister. Takamichi becomes aware of Hakai's mission to kill Taiju and is left wondering how to stop the inevitable. It's not long before Takamichi is joined by his friends who have become members of Taman and they discuss the brewing war with Black Dragon. Chufuyu explains how Taiju and his gang have become the most brutal and insane in history, holding the Kanto region in their iron grip. Taman was created due to the influence of the notorious Black Dragon. Kazutora found himself in trouble on their turf and his loyal friends banded together to save him, forming the now famous Tokyo Manji Gang. They fought tooth and nail against the powerful Black Dragon and emerged victorious, crushing the ninth generation of their rivals. However, Taiju, the mastermind behind Black Dragon, was not one to give up so easily. He revived the gang with new members and transformed them into a formidable military force, complete with new uniforms and rigorous training. To finance their new look, Taiju used his connections with the wealthy to sell his impressive muscles for cash. Despite the intense rivalry between Taman and Black Dragon, Takamichi realizes that this fight is personal and intends to face the dangerous Taiju alone. Chifuyu takes Takamichi aside to speak with him in private. Takamichi assumes that Chifuyu wants to reassure him that he's not alone, but instead, Chifuyu encourages him to enjoy the experience. He explains that Keisuke never asked him to take care of Taman just to stress him out and that he would be angry with Chifuyu right now. With this newfound knowledge, Takamichi opens up to Chifuyu about his time-traveling adventures, revealing his desperate mission to save Hinata and the fates of Manjiro, Teta, and Chifuyu himself. Surprisingly, Chifuyu takes everything in stride, admitting that he had suspected something was different about Takamichi all along. He even points out how Takamichi's actions during the fight with Valhalla suggest that he knew Keisuke's fate all along. Despite being unable to save his friend, Chifuyu is in awe of Takamichi's bravery and resilience and reassures him that they are partners in this fight. With Chifuyu's support, Takamichi feels a weight lifted off his shoulders and he breaks down in tears of joy. The two friends decide to grab some food to satiate their hunger. However, Chifuyu can't seem to shake off his frustration about getting killed by Tanta in the future. Despite his desire to eliminate him, he understands that it's not an option in the present moment. Teta, the captain of the 3rd division, is not someone to be taken lightly, as he has an army of 100 men under him. On the other hand, the ex-Valhalla members make up the 6th division. It's clear that they're outnumbered and have just recently taken over the 1st division. Despite this, Chifuyu remains optimistic and confident in Takamichi's abilities to build the best 1st division. He vows to stand by his side till the very end. In another part of town, the Taman leaders gather to discuss the recent events. Ken reveals that Takamichi has been beaten up by the leader of Black Dragon. Taiju, who knows Takamichi, sees this as a declaration of war. The Taman leaders are ready to retaliate, but Takashi warns them that it won't be as easy as before. This is a new generation of Black Dragon, and they mean business. Hakai knows the turf of Black Dragon and wonders why Takamichi took him there. Yasuhiro suspects Hakai of being a spy for Black Dragon, but Takamichi tries to defend him. He recalls Chifuyu's advice to prevent Hakai from quitting Taman. Hakai admits that he's ready to face any punishment for leaving Taman, but Manjiro must grant him permission. Takamichi tries to use Chifuyu's plan to bribe Manjiro with a dorayaki, but to no avail. He then tries to read Chifuyu's notes, but realizes that they're useless. Finally, Manjiro leaves the decision to Takashi, who denies Hakai's request. Hakai tells Takashi that he made up his mind. Takashi tells him to not look so sad and that he understands, but is not allowing it. What will Hakai do now? How will the Tokyo Manji deal with the Black Dragons? Find out on our next recap of Tokyo Revengers Season 2.